Welcome back everyone with the first video update on newly formed tropical storm Milton. So let's start first with the big picture and then we'll zoom into the details. So starting first with the big picture, this is the Gulf of Mexico. You can see sort of Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida over here. The area of disturbed weather that we've been watching for a while now has acquired enough organization to be classified a tropical storm and has thus acquired the name Milton. Right now, Milton is situated way over here on the southwest of the Gulf of Mexico uh, with maximum peak wind speeds of 40 miles per hour and the pressure of 1,006 millibars. Now, the million dollar question is where is Milton gonna go and what impacts may it bring? So let's change the graphic a little bit here so you can see more clearly the track of Milton will progress over the Gulf of Mexico over the next several days potentially impacting Florida. Now, what about timeline and impacts? Let's tell you what we do know. We anticipate that the conditions are conducive for Milton to develop into a hurricane over the next couple of days. So let's look here on uh, Monday morning, I'm sorry, this is Monday evening, max wind speeds predicted of 100 miles per hour over the central Gulf of Mexico. And then as it approaches the Florida Peninsula on Wednesday, this is 7 a.m. Wednesday, maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour. That's right on the category two slash category three status on the Saffir Simpson scale. So all indications of potentially very impactful hurricane over the Florida Peninsula uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday. So let's talk about the timing. Let's talk about the timelines. What this graphic is telling you here is when the tropical storm force winds or bad conditions might start impacting Florida Peninsula. So this line right here is showing you uh, conditions could be just off the coast of the Florida Peninsula. So it's off the west coast of the Florida Peninsula late on Tuesday and then spread across the Florida Peninsula Tuesday night into Wednesday. Why is the timing so important? Because it really determines how you prepare and what actions you take. So we're still sort of early on in this process. So you, know, you can start to think about how to begin preparing but based off this, you really have the rest of today, tomorrow, and Monday to get prepared. All right. Now, regardless of where the storm tracks, it's going to produce a large area of heavy rain and potential flooding. We're at the tail end of the wet season, a rainy season here in Florida, which means that it won't take much rain to cause flash flooding and dangerous conditions. If you look at this graphic here, regardless of where the track goes, it's going to produce heavy rain potentially all the way down here into South Florida. This is something we have to keep in mind. It's too early to get into specifics of who gets how much and where. So what can we do at this early stage of the game? Um, well, first, let's talk about assembling your hurricane supply. So if you haven't done so for the hurricane season, now's a great time to make sure you've got your hurricane supplies. If you uh, depleted your hurricane supplies during a lean, you've got to replenish them now unfortunately so let's walk through some of the basics these are the basics or the bare minimum that you need food and water food and water to last you and your family and your pets for several days if the storm does impact you top off your your cars and trucks with gasoline and keep them full keep them full often it can be very difficult and time consuming to get fuel Make sure your electronics, especially the ones that you will use to communicate and stay in touch with your friends and family are charged and your backup batteries or charging systems are charged. Make sure you've got medicine and prescriptions on hand to last you a week or two in case, in case it's difficult to get those after a storm. And then make sure you've got cash on hand. The other preparedness that you can start to take, and this one's important, especially for people on the Florida West Coast, is while no evacuations have been ordered, they may be necessary later, may be necessary later. Here in Florida, we label our evacuation zones with letters A through F. It's imperative if you, you, to, that you know whether or not you're in one of these and which ones. That way, if you are ordered to evacuate, you know if that's, uh, it includes you. The way you can do that is go to floridadisaster.org slash no, floridadisaster.org slash no to determine if you live in an evacuation zone. 
That's it for us today. We will be back tomorrow with our usual two-a-day video briefings at 11.30 and 5.30. And as always, you can get the latest information at hurricanes.gov.